You ever see that? You remember Austin Powers? Uh, yeah. What was that noise for? I'm not like a huge Austin Powers guy. Oh, how dare you! There's a really unfunny joke. Uh, <laughs> I think it's I think it's the second one, where um, he's pouring himself a cup of coffee, looks away for a second, and then looks back, to, and then grabs a different pot, and it's fat bastard shit. Oh yeah. So he's drinking like a steaming glass of fat bastard shit, and then <laughs> it is kind of jo- funny the jokes that follow up. Like, Basil says, Austin, what you're drinking there is shit. And he's like, I know, it doesn't taste very good, does it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. There's a lot of deeply unfunny bits in that, those movies. Yeah. There's some more funny ones. But Do you know what is one thing I saw uh, as well that just kind of made me think? So there was a whole post about... Um, Oh, it was it was a post on Tumblr. Yeah, about how Austin Powers. They couldn't put, make Austin Powers anymore with fucking cancel culture and woke feminazis, fucking PC gone mad. Yeah, so in Austin Powers, they someone was like, "I'm glad Austin Powers was asleep from the years of like 1965 to 1998 or something." Yeah, because they said he was a top British asset, and that means he would have. <laughs> been involved with with Ireland. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't think Austin Powers would have done that job. I don't think he would have fought the Irish because he's a communist. But he still works for fucking the government anyway. Yeah, but he's a rogue. He's a sexy rogue spy who I does mean, he what still he does wants. shit that's not great. Like like you know, infiltrate foreign nations to do things for the benefit of the British government. I'm trying to think. He really doesn't actually go to a lot of like foreign places. What like, do you mean? Doesn't he always go to foreign? He's in fucking America. I don't really consider that. They're just doing. It's they're a just, foreign nation. No, the Americans England. are doing that to everyone else, so they're just getting it back from mom and dad. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. I guess. But he's just working in the country. It's not like they're doing anything to the country's government. That's what you think. And I believe. Oh, at least in the second one, it was a joint operation between uh, MI6 and... Well, what you don't know is that one. Austin Powers was the guy who killed that uh, Iranian gu- uh, general for Donald Trump in 2017. Gee, Austin Powers would have been like 70. He would have been whatever My- Mike Myers' actual age was. In- oh, probably like 60. Uh, maybe in his 50s. James Bond's in his 50s sometimes, and he still fucking does murder. Yeah. But that's, like, movie 50s. Actually, I guess Daniel Craig is kind of, like, still fit. Yeah. Did they announce a new Bond yet? Um, In the most recent Bond, he hands it over to the black woman, I thought. Yeah, but they do that... I've, I feel like they've done that before, where they hand it over to someone, and then the next movie has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it depends like, on what they Because, like, none of the do. James Bonds are canon together. Can it... You, I mean, they are well. The ones that feature the same actors, are they all canon. they all do. What do you mean? Do you so, mean the same characters? So okay, so the thing that's interesting is, so sometimes they'll like switch characters, like Q, for instance, and not say anything. Mm-hmm. But consistently, they've had M change, um, because they kept. Dame Judi Dench as M from the Brosnan to the Craig Bonds. Okay. And before that, I think they had the same actor before it was. But so Dame is Judy Daniel Dench. Craig also supposed to be Pierce Brosnan? Daniel Craig's not. Uh, okay. The theory that a lot of people like is that James Bond is a code name. Yeah. I don't know if James Bond. So the, there's multiple readings. You could do all James Bond films are canon to all of them, and they're all about one person, which isn't likely because in Casino Royale he gets recruited by Judy Dench M, but M wasn't always played by Ju- Judy Dench, right? So it's all like everything in the movie is titles. So a lot of yeah, a lot of people are like James Bond is a title that gets handed down. And 007 down. is his agent name, but James Bond is a title. Both, yeah, it's like both, right? So like, even if the black woman... Agent 007 is always going to be called James Bond, potentially. Now, Skyfall uh, kind of 
fucks that theory up because he goes to his familial home, which is the Bond family. Because ultimately, it's a, just a series of movies, and they don't really think about it that hard. Yeah, as like people who it's like, not Star Wars, which yeah. they also didn't think about that hard for the last three. Because it's just a fucking movie. Like, who gives a shit? Like, yeah, the <laughs> Marvel fans. <laughs> like, it's like it's like James Bond is just like you'd want to see this fucking spy movie. Mm-hmm. I think the next James Bond should be like a period piece set in the sixties or though. Or that would be interesting. Be cool. they could, maybe they could do it better than actually. I didn't see the movie, so I don't really want to talk that much shit. But Kingsman, I like the, the first Kingsman. Kingsman. The, I, I I've heard the Kingsman is mostly a good movie, except for at the end where it's like Hitler and the communists teams up to be evil, <laughs> like Hitler and Lenin, and it's like these people have fucking diametrically opposing fucking opinions. They hated each other. Who was the Russians killed more Nazis than Americans? But the Russians and the Germans were cool for a minute, for like five seconds. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I can't. I'm not. I'm not at that point in my life where I give so, a shit about World War Two. Okay, in both world. So okay, in both world wars, the way it played out was that Russia and Germany were never on the same side. Uh huh. weren't on the same side. However. There was some level of collaboration between the Nazi government and the Russian government that not that they were going to team up, but just simply that they were not going to aggress on each other. But Hitler always planned to go back on Stalin and Stalin didn't give a fuck because Russia's Russia and Hitler didn't get that Russia is Russia. Yeah. And then he decided to start a land war with Russia. And then Russian people just fucking murdered all the Nazis because they're Ru- like, it's like you've taken German people into the coldest fucking most fucked up place on earth. And the people who live there are just like, we're used to this. Yeah. It's <laughs> isn't it fucking crazy. That it's like, you hear like a headline about Ukraine and it's like, oh, Ukraine, this much smaller nation is decimating Russia's soldiers. And it's like, yeah. what? I get why now. Because they're sending, they're like uh, conscripting kids and sending them to die. Yeah. And I mean, Ukraine, it's like a guerrilla force, which, yeah. you know, as you see, as we saw in like Vietnam War, you know, you don't need to be the most fucking <laughs> technologically advanced nation on earth to fuck up a... Yeah, what if Zelensky just fucking turned around after when everything was over? And it's just like, alright, Ukraine, you get parts of you get all the parts of Ukraine back? Whatever. It's over. They're, they're, Russia cannot invade you again because we're, you're a part of NATO. And Zelensky's mm-hmm. just like, one second. I was doing pretty well here. <laughs> And it makes it takes over Russia, and Russia becomes Ukraine too. <laughs> I don't think that could happen. I also don't think that's what Zelensky or no, Ukrainian that dude is too peaceful. Want. Like it's it's just also not reasonable. Like unless you are legitimately just vying for for power um, and like blatant political gain, it doesn't make sense to take over an area. Yeah, like if you actually want to like run a thing peacefully it doesn't make sense to take over an area because it just means that your your government budget i guess goes up slightly because these people are paying taxes Mm -hmm. but like you still have all the same resources and you have to manage more land yeah (laughs) and people it just doesn't it doesn't make that much sense if you're like the actual president and you're not just like you know a fucking dog that's trying to like take over shit to be fucking piece of shit you know yeah um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, just if Zelensky's smart, he wouldn't try to invade Russia because nobody who attempts that <laughs> has ever won. <laughs> has ever really seen like yes, a positive but now it effect. Is, uh, Ukrainians versus Russians. Listen, they are built the same. Don't get me wrong. I lo- uh, I'm pro Ukraine, but uh, you know, I. I it's honestly none of my business. I just think, you know, invading isn't yeah. usually good. There's this one fucking, like, fucking, like, decrepit building in Toronto. Yeah. Well, there's many, but there's this one specific one. Uh, and there's, like, the they've always had, like, it's been, like, painted, like, Ukraine flag and shit. Yeah. But there's, like, a... It's, like, a new sign I saw today where it just says, where you at, NATO? <laughs> it's, like... You can just read the news to know <laughs> where they are, not joining the war, because then it's a bigger issue. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
personally. It would be cool if you know the, I am okay they got with some su- outside help, but unfortunately, I am okay with America supplying, created the nuke. Yeah, I'm okay with supplying Ukraine with the weapons and funding that they need to mm-hmm. both do like help effort as well as you know contribute to the war effort. I I do not think that anything good would be coming from stripping any other country's military into a war zone that and also like other than uh and also like if especially if like the u.s comes to fucking help them the u.s when they come to help any country they they're getting theirs dude yeah like they're taking theirs and they're fucking up that place yeah which is why like Zelensky's asking for fucking like nato's help and not specific parts of nato yeah like, I'm sure if the U.S. showed up and they're like, we're here to help, you'd be like, I need the rest of you. Oh, great. British of American I need, soldiers I are I need the help. Canadians, the Ukrainians. <laughs> no, yeah. fuck. The, uh, the English. I mean, all the countries, like, do dumb shit. It's not... Do you think... Where do you think the Canadians were during Iraq and Afghanistan? Oh, in there. Where do you think the fucking British were? They were in there, bro. Oh, no, I know. It's just that the United States was, like, they're the, the ones who started yeah. it. So they're and the they're also who... the motherfuckers who, like, wave their big fucking fat cock around and make more yeah. problems. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Anyway. I was mostly planning on talking about anime that I watched this week. Yeah, I was going to get there, too, at some point. But, you know, I, I just have a real hard time picking up on social cues because I'm so autistic... Like, my favorite character from the best video game of the year, Symmetra, in Overwatch 2. Okay. So, I just want to talk about Overwatch 2 for a minute before we get to that. <laughs> okay. So, okay, but the reason that set up was... Wow, um, you gave money to Blizzard? They have... The game's free. ...gotten yet another the game's sexual f- assault <laughs> lawsuit. The game is free. <laughs> yeah, you support it by playing it. Yeah, they get my ad, they get ad revenue from me playing it. Um, and also, you know, you're going to be fucking tempted to do microtransaction oh, bullshit. Absolutely. Have you seen these skins? They're so cute. Yeah, bro. Um, so they. And that's why you should also boycott Overwatch porn. No jacking off to Overwatch. Okay. Porn. All right. One second. Hold up. One second. <laughs> oh, there was some fucking interview that came out right before Overwatch Two. Yeah. Uh, what about uh this character named Symmetra, who is like um. They're like, you can tell she's autistic or whatever, right? Yeah. They were just like, her autism plays a huge role into her character. And literally all they did was add one line where she talks about how she doesn't pick up on social cues well. It's like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, you're such a moron. <laughs> you, can really- you can just literally <laughs> label her as autistic. Like, <laughs> community community never says that Ahmed is autistic, but we all know he is. Yes. <laughs> They, we've really in- <laughs> integrated Symmetra's autism into the game feel. <laughs> you know who else is autistic? The robots in the game, because they also don't understand They're social all, situations. Yeah. Or, so that's what you're saying. I that, mean, like Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. You know. Autistic characters. Played by autistic actors. <laughs> I, uh... They're not, but I think it's funny to call Dave Bautista autistic. I don't think it is funny, and I think that's ableist. Mm. Nah, I'm giving them one of our strongest. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love Dave Bautista. I think he's great. Yeah, I love him and his lesbian mother. Is his mom lesbian? He had a whole thing where someone hit him with some homophobia, and he fucking like my mom's them. A lesbian. Well, bro. he he went on this whole like rant about how like he supports it all. He's like his mom's like gay or whatever. He I think that's he, great. I don't know if she was gay later in his life or he was actually raised by like two women or but one woman, but who was gay. Regardless, he is very aggressively like pro LGBT. <laughs> that's great. Do you know who else is like that? Who yeah. Pedro Pascal? Yeah, good. His, the best, uh, his the sister, best Disney employees. His sister's trans. You know who else is pro LGBT? Who? Guy Fieri. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he's officiated like two hundred gay marriages or something. Yeah, that's pretty poggers. Yeah, good for him. Oh yeah. So, anyways, it is so crazy. Yeah. For Overwatch two, that all they had to do was remove one fucking role, and the game is great. Like that's it. It's fun to play again. It's fun enough that you forget the monstrosities that the characters have done. <laughs> the character, the character, yeah, company. the Cree. That's why we had to change his name. 
Oh yeah, I saw something where it's like if you still call him a crew, you're a fucking piece of shit. And I played like, the game for four fucking years before Overwatch Two was announced. Do you think I can change it that bro, quickly? Here's something. It's not he didn't, them pronouns. I can't get it that quickly. <laughs> McCree didn't fucking transition. He McCree got a name change because he was he's had a fucking dipshit name. Named after do you think? Do you think me, a person who's never fucking played Overwatch? But just knows the characters mostly from memes. Fucking even knows what McCree's new name is. No. Yeah. Also, now what? if they ma- they made McCree transition to the girl cowboy character, and you couldn't play as McCree anymore, and you could only play as the girl one because it's canonic that they're just, she's they're the, trans now. They're trans now. That would be too many women in the game. <laughs> like That'd actually, be great. The, f- the three new characters they put in for Overwatch Two are all, all women. women. Well, it's because but, Overwatch makes most of its money from fucking source filmmaker, dude. You're right, but <laughs> also, <laughs> it's just that it's getting to the point. Where, just give me a fucking twink then, like. If you want people to be horny for characters, just put a finally put like a soft boy in there. Yeah, okay. I'm but not, instead, you keep putting these baras. I in. mean, they already fucking made Valorant's just Overwatch with I don't twinks, know, twinks and twinks. It's only. got more twinks, doesn't it? Valorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah Valorant is Overwatch, but with twinks and twinks only. Yeah, and, and like and girls, fit ass women and hot girls. Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know. Um. Yeah, so just the game is so, a lot more fun. Great. The new characters are cool. Um, the one who's from Toronto is a fucking robot. She also says Toronto correctly. <gasps> and, uh, okay. Go to Can contender. I see the keyword for a second? Okay. I want to show you um, the future liberals want in Overwatch 2. Yeah, Kim's convenience is still there, right? No, oh, man. I don't know. So I think It was there in the beta. Yeah. Might have been removed for licensing reasons. Well, it wasn't literally Kim's convenience, but like a reference. Yeah, I think. I mean, also that's like a real store that exists. Yeah, I drive past it all the time. Yeah, it's on Queen and something. So New Queen Street is the name of the map. Yeah, honestly, you also spelled street wrong. (laughs) Steet. I think the biggest problem with this map is that there's not any. Like, there's nothing really about this map that makes me think of Canada, other than the fact that it's snowy. And there's Canadian flags and shit. Yeah. Can you and the CN Tower's there? Yeah, but that's like far in the background. Yeah. So let me see images. So hopefully someone is taking a picture of it. Okay. Well, I guess that's that's supposed the to be... real Queen Street. <laughs> yeah. Queen Street and what though? I don't know. Yeah, I can't recognize everything. I'm not a goddamn madman. Yeah, we don't we don't live down there exactly. They got the streetcars. That's Toronto as fuck. Yeah, I so uh, though <laughs> they've got a fucking <laughs> they got a building with fucking Arabic writing on it. That's Toronto. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, New Queen Street Overwatch map. Fuck. I'm just there's. You're gonna get a map of actual Queen Street. <laughs> yeah, I am. As you can see, <laughs> you didn't type in Overwatch. You just typed New Queen Street. <laughs> 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 so okay so in one of the spawn points there is a map of um yeah. the the transit lines but like the subway and did they fix it it's not just a u anymore it's did they just have it as a u before no because in real toronto the fucking subway map is a u yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's honestly toronto has like a really bad subway map the fucking yeah the worst thing i mean there's worse places obviously it's not fucking la which actually has like pretty dog shit public transit yeah it has like a crazy like well no, like they have like a like a huge subway system no one knows about it yeah. and no one takes it so it's like looks like shit yeah give me a fucking screenshot of the spawns oh yeah so they also put in this new game mode where yeah. there's a robot in the center of the the map yeah and uh in 30 seconds after you get you both both teams get released from your spawns it's activates and you have to just escort it to either one side or the other and it can switch back and forth it's like 10 minutes and it's just like one big map Ooh, if you just nice. mute that oh my god i'm about to uh <laughs> toronto's raccoons is a curling club <laughs> nice okay there's a picture of a dog with a fucking dog he penis. has robot legs uh oh i thought i thought they were focusing on his dick there's a bar <laughs> There's a thing. Yeah, this is this is like it's yeah, kind of Canadian. It just doesn't. 
It's a little more walkable than the real thing. <laughs> yes, the future liberals want. Um, I think these hotels that you're sort of able to peek out from. Are I think the one references. of them's supposed to be like uh, the famous one downtown, maybe. Which right? one? Uh, Royal York. No, it's not because that's not where that is. Never mind. Because the, the Royal York's not really, you know, at uh, in here. Fuck. They're not just. They're just not going to show it. I might just uh, message someone on my Discord right now and be like, "Can you get this for me? Yeah. <laughs> Can you just head out and find this?" <laughs> it's f- but they made it more more of a web of subways, dude. It's fucking huge. That's there's great. like a line. There's like one. There's like a little thing, like a legend at the bottom, and it's like line to Mississauga, line to Scarborough, <gasps> line to Oshawa, and it's like Yo, what the there's fuck? A Mississauga I think there's a line, line to Newmarket as well. <gasps> It's my hometown, in case you don't know. Yeah, and probably Barry, but like it's just like Barry. It's well, you, huge. I'm mean, actually taking the fucking subway to Barry. That's that's a go trainable away. Like, but you know how like the go train. Sorry, I this uh, the subway. So this is gonna get way too like local. Okay. But there's like the line straight across, like where like no, nah, not Lakeshore. That's the go train map that you're ta- talking about. The Lakeshore West line. There's the U, and then there's the line. That's the, the one subway that goes map that you're talking the about. Subway, the subway, yeah. The U is the what is that? The the Young Dundas line, right? Or I no. think it goes University Young Dundas. Yeah, but that the U, which is like takes you into the city, and the rest are yeah more sideways. And there's one that'll take you out to like Tobacco on that way if you go long enough. Yeah, and then the other side will take you to like Scarborough, and that's it. Yeah. Actually, probably not even Scarborough. It's probably just the beach. I think they're still not done the York University subway stop, even though they've been working on that for years. I know that instead of... That shit's in New New York, North York. I know instead of putting in more subways, they're going for more of those, like, LRTs. Oh, you mean the streetcars? Streetcars that are, like, don't... That just go up and down one road. Like, that's why Eglinton in Toronto is a fucking nightmare. Mm. Because it's uh, always under construction, and I think they're doing another one on... Not sure. And again, uh, Toronto streetcars are fucking iconic. They're they're great. They are on. They're like a godsend. The problem is, is that they're harder to deal with than uh, than a subway, which is super easy. Well, that's also what the LRT is supposed to fix. Where it's like they are in their own lanes. Yeah. You cannot touch these lanes. So if I don't, if you, the listener, do not live anywhere where streetcars are, or have never been to a place with streetcars, the way streetcars work is that. You as a pass as a driver mm-hmm. can drive in the same lanes as the streetcars, but when a streetcar is coming, you gotta get out of the way of because no, like you could just stay in front of it. it doesn't you could, really matter. you could, you'd fucking get your car destroyed because the streetcar is stronger than your car. But no, but they stop. They don't yeah, keep going. They do stop. You're right. But the thing It'd with streetcars <laughs> that's difficult, um, especially in a city like Toronto, you know, this is one of the issues, is. Streetcar kind of runs like a bus schedule, but it's less likely to get delayed than a bus and doesn't have to deal with traffic the same way that Breaks a bus does. Breaks down a lot less as well. Breaks down less, better for the environment, but much like a bus, um, it's, it's you know, you got to deal with the schedule. There's not a really, and unlike buses, there's not great like stops for them. They just kind of get the fuck in. They just, well, they have a lot of laws about it now. Yeah, but like you know what I mean, like a there, you, there's no streetcar stops like a bus stop. Like, oh, well, there is now. Oh, there are. There are some. Yeah, on King Street at least. Okay, there's. You know, sometimes it's just like it stops here, and you kind of there's not really a sign for it. You just know that, because you interact with it more. They added. That's why they have the lights on them now. Yeah, they have it pretty much where it's like if you fucking drive even close to it. Oh, I mean, trying to interact with it as a passenger. Oh, there's buttons you can press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to like, get on. Except it still feels like you can't just do it anywhere, which is yeah. odd, but whatever. It's they can't be it can't be open, can't be San Francisco because it <laughs> it, it snows here. It snows. So it's not and super it's fucking windy. And you gotta wait for the fucker outside, unlike a subway, which is more ideal for the yeah. city. And honestly. they don't put a lot of they don't because it's the city, you can't put coverings down without no. it like it would fuck shit up. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, Subway, them improving the Toronto Subway would be great, even though there are these other above-ground options that are probably also good. Subways are just, you know, they can be more effective. I feel like there should be, like, like, there's so many crazy, like, tools. I feel like we should be able to develop, like, some sort of boring device. (laughs) 
Sorry, uh, I was just thinking about the stupid Elon Musk thing. I feel like they got, they have to have made the, use some fucking sick technology to be able to make those tunnels. Like I don't think they definitely like, or you know what? They probably just did because Which, of Elon Musk, where yeah. they like just get something like get a giant fucking drill that drills a hole for the subway, but then have it like be a thing where right behind it you can fucking like erect things around it, like on like make the tube as it goes. Because instead, yeah, it's the like problem is you that dig that, out the whole fucking tu- tunnel. But you have to build the fucking inside of the tunnel around it, or else it's going to collapse. Yeah, especially when problem. you go under a building. That's why I'm saying make a machine that can do all the that things does at the same time. <laughs> I think that'd be really hard. And I mean, we've been making subways. The sub the subway in Toronto started in like 1901 or some shit. Yeah, and then they took all that dirt and made th- everything beyond Front Street, <laughs> like Lakeshore is man made. Yeah, and then after that, they were like, "Well, we've extended the city out, like Center Center Island. Let's make Center Island. Let's make <laughs> Billy Bishop." I don't know if Center Island is actually Center man-made. Island is man made. Really? Yeah, the whole thing's man made. That's why it's so flat. Do you know that Center Island, the fucking cost to live there is actually super fucking cheap, but that's because there's like a lineup, and also thing. no one owns the property there. Yeah, it's all rented. Well, or it's like one like. The families who owned it originally own it, and they can't sell it because if they sell it, they have to sell it to the city or something. No, it's that um, the it's. I think I think you can buy it, but that it's like regulated to be actually like decently priced. But there's just a long ass waiting list because people don't sell that shit because the prices are so regulated that you don't make much money on it. Also, if you're fucking retired, like just stay there. Yeah, it's also really nice. Yeah, like if my mom was like retired and somehow was in those places, it'd be like, yeah, I'll fucking bring you groceries. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Also, my mom doesn't eat much. I could forget for like a week, and she'd be fine. <laughs> and they have the theme park right there. Uh, yeah, it's like it's like five rides. <laughs> Not the best theme park. It's an in the island world. you can go get drunk on. True. I, I used to go there all That's, the time. And as the a nudist kid. beach is there. Hmm? The nudist beach is on the island. Oh yeah, it's on the other side of the island, facing away from the city. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a fucking nudist, that would be a safe place to live. Would be but yeah, I don't know. No, oh, and the new. So the new. One of the new Overwatch characters, Sojourn, she is French. She is Canadian. I almost said French. That would have been horrible. She could be she French. She's Canadian. Canadian. She's fucking chiced up, but she is also has the problem of she's supposed to be like 40 or 50. Like she's supposed to be the same age, actually, probably like 50 to 60. She's supposed to be the same age as like Reinhardt, who's like a big fucking dude with white hair. Anna, who is somebody, who is a full grown woman's mother. Like she's supposed to be one Jack, the uh, Soldier 76. He's gay yeah. now. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to be like the He's founding gay members He's of gay Overwatch. He's been gay since they found out about the first bad case at Blizzard. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she's supposed to be like a founding member, but she looks as young as everyone else because she got cyberpunked. Hell yeah. But she does have like an interesting lore thing about it where she is aware of the conundrums people would have with replacing her whole physical body with like cybernetics. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I don't care if I'm not me anymore. I'm just here to do my duty. Cool. Real soldier hours. <laughs> now imagine if Overwatch weren't fucking cops. <laughs> yeah, they are cops. Yeah, bro. They are. They are science fiction cops. The ones we kind of like get let go for a while and then go like it's a bit too close now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, you're bad for playing Overwatch two at all. Fuck you. I don't care. I'm gonna go home and play it after this. Don't. <laughs> It's not good. Too bad. I got like four people waiting. Okay, you want to talk about fucking fucking anime? Yeah, we'll talk about the bad anime that's on. Okay, what do you want to start with? I don't know. You you watch the shows. Okay. I watch some stuff, but like you lead and I'll tell you. Okay, I've watched a few shows recently. Um, I watched uh, I watched the first few episodes of Gundam the Witch for Mercury. That, that looks cool. but It's really like... cool. And it's not in any other Gundam universe. And you can start it. It's completely standalone. Yeah, I saw stuff about that where someone was asking, like, do I have to watch all the Gundam series? There's so many. And it's like, dude, you don't have to watch all the Gundam series for the ones that they're related to. I mean, you do, actually. <laughs> yeah, it but will, will you be that lost? Depends on which one you're trying to watch. <laughs> like, okay, it's... <laughs> there's, but, like, if you're trying to watch... There's definitely parts of Gundam where it's yeah. like, this is JoJo. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's I'm like, with you. It's related, but... So the mainline Gundam, if you're trying to watch... Mobile Suit Gundam's Hathaway, the the movie on Netflix right now, which is great. Uh-huh. Um, you can start it there, but you would be missing a lot of context because 
Hathaway's dad and mom are two characters who were main characters in OG Gundam 79. They're uh, they're important side characters in uh, Zeta Gundam, and then they're background characters in Gundam Double Zeta. And <laughs> then uh, what happens? What's happening in the world in in you know Hathaway is kind of in response to events that happen in uh, Unicorn Unicorn Narrative and. Uh, and uh, I think F91 I could be wrong about F91 being yeah. involved because <laughs> those things all happened in the universe and then the you know Hathaway is about the fact that this guy named Hathaway is like I'm going to be a, I'm doing terrorism for good mm. classic Gundam yeah you know so which it's cool oh yeah so which for Mercury is great so there's the episode zero prologue which is on Crunchyroll and other uh, streaming services that you do it's not like an optional prologue you do have to watch it in order to get it it is part of the story where the main character of the tv show is like a baby during this but it is the in the necessary context to understand the point of the television series it's a it's an episode they might as, it might as well just be episode one just yeah watch, it's the watch reason watch the why show. it's not actually it's episode zero on crunchyroll it was actually released as a theatrical event called you know witch for mercury prologue okay so it's it aired like two or three months before the show it's final fantasy 15 king's fall uh king's glaive king's glaive okay. um my bad yeah it's like that only it's it's just a, the length of an episode and it's in the same oh it's only fucking 25 minutes yeah <laughs> okay then yeah just watch it treat it as the first episode it's a yeah it's i mean the the reason why is because it's tonally different from the first episode uh-huh. and the rest of the show um, because it's it's more classic Gundam me because it's like you know it's like here is a political situation involving the earth and space and big robots yeah you know terrible shit happens main character's a baby prologue ends right um, then episode one of the show it's, it's like a protagonist starts their first day of high school and it's a little more light hearted and we're gonna get there and fuck you up like a Gundam show as we proceed. Also, it's maybe going to be a Yuri. Doubt it. I mean, I, I, if it is, it's going to be like incredibly implied and nothing cool. Like it's not. It's not going to be a Yuri it's, on ice for Yuri. No, I mean, I mean, Gundam can kind of get away with whatever the fuck they want. I guess, but like, it's not Scooby-Doo. at the end of episode two. The or, I mean, by the end of episode two. The two girls have like held each other very close. Yeah, yeah, like friends. They're gonna finger each other like friends. <laughs> yeah, bro, like friends. I can't wait till they mouth fuck each other. Get away from me! It's not on the, not on recording. I'll give you one on Saturday. <gasps> um, yeah, that's good. But yeah, it's a great show. I highly recommend it. You don't need to know shit about shit. Uh, to get into it, and it's quite good. I was concerned. I was sitting like on the cable, and like, the <laughs> shift would just like boop, end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. No. Um. So yeah. So I I watched that, uh, and then I uh, yeah last night I watched uh, the first episode of Chainsaw Man. <sighs> Overplayed garbage. It's pretty good. Dog shit show. Yeah, it's a good episode. It's pretty pretty good show. I kind of. I watched. I have one criticism for the whole episode, but honestly, it's like it's just fine what they did. Too much CG. No, I thought it was fine. It looked funny. (laughs) Yeah, it looked funny in a couple shots. For the most part, it's fine. Um, Yeah, I I felt, but I see people, you know, yelling about it because they're annoying. It's just like because of the because like when you read the manga, you can't get every little bit of detail because if the only time you're gonna get super detail with some stuff is like with like uh, his stuff is like on characters faces it's not going to be about the action yeah um just the way when he turns into chainsaw man in the manga he like explodes out of that corpse pile just has a quick run through slicing everybody like nothing stops stops him there's no slowdown he gets to the zombie and he like kills it instantly yeah and then he does do like the slaughter at the end with like all the the zombie leftovers Mm-hmm. Oh, spoilers for the first episode of Chainsaw Man, you fuckers. Yeah, bro. First episode of fucking 12. For, yeah. Can't, we'll, we'll spoil the 12th for you and still be jerks about it. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, it's just that in the manga, it's just a lot. It's a lot faster how it happens. But you mm. know, it's like it's fine. Him like immediately turning into a chainsaw man, as the title suggests. Yeah, and like slicing through some guys slowly, like getting a feel for it, is fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, they only adapted one chapter, and I think that makes that sense. chapter is also eighty pages long. Though. Right. So, but what I'm saying is like. If they hadn't found a spot in the episode to make the episode the runtime it needs to be, yeah, like they had to. So what do you do? Oh, have him take a second to get fucking adjusted to being Chainsaw Man. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. It's like internally, you know, consistent with you know what you expect in a television show. Yeah, like I know what the next episode's going to cover. It's when he meets uh, Aki and he's going to like probably hunt his first devil pretty much exactly how fucking like if you watch Jujutsu Kaisen these shows follow a pretty similar rhythm <laughs> yeah until you meet well, power the, and then the the, the mangaka of Chainsaw Man when it was announced that Mappa was going to do the show he's like oh Mappa who did fucking Jujutsu Kaisen and uh one other show uh, Chainsaw Demon Man's Slayer. a f- uh they did Demon Slayer no but it's uh, I forget if that was what the one he said in the interview oh, specifically um, He's like Mappo, who did Chainsaw Man, or who did uh, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and some other manga. Did Hell's Paradise get a manga? I mean, an maybe, anime? Maybe something like that. Because I know that's like, there's He's, a term for that with like the dark trio, which is like maybe. But Chainsaw he was, Man, all Jujutsu he said, Kaisen, and Hell's Paradise. He was like, because Chainsaw Man is just a fucking bad ripoff of those two <laughs> things, so that makes me very proud. Yeah, uh... Yeah, I was debating with Chris, like, where we think the first season's gonna end. Because Chris was actually kind of said something stupid to me. What? He was like, wow, the first episode was so slow. I legitimately thought they were gonna get all of it done in one season. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. No, that doesn't make sense. They're only doing... 98 chapters. They're doing 12 episodes. And there's... I can... Three seasons. Three sets of 12. Yeah. I can see it split up into. It's like, the... This one's gonna end with the other weapon people... You can usually tell, like, obviously this isn't a fucking end-all, be-all. This is just a broad look. If you just split the number of chapters in half, that's how many episodes it takes to adapt it, roughly. Sometime, yeah, so Chips 48 episodes. 96. It's a 12-episode season. Most seasons are more than 12 right Mm -hmm. but this episode this season's 12 episodes so you know we'll probably get to chapter 24 or 26 or something like that or i heard people say i think it's gonna get the end of volume three is what what i heard some people say is where they expect it to end i know there there's like an express like it's gonna it's gonna be you know denji meets aki their group then they're gonna be power they become a group and then you're going to meet like the first like big challenge they face mm-hmm. and then the last like that'll be two episodes and then the last four episodes will be all about the last big challenge yeah and then after that it'll grow into the stuff with uh leading into like opening up the portal to hell and then the end will happen as like a 12 episode season and i feel like i might actually be run get putting too much at the end there mm-hmm. but we'll see it's just well if a couple episodes can do three or or so chapters each then that would probably make room for it i as somebody who doesn't know anything about the fucking manga except for what ian's told me (laughs) i'm just only thinking it from like the fights that uh uh denji has but there's like entire chapter like multiple chapters that are based around like aki fighting or like other characters you don't like I don't remember the name of the, yeah. the stuff with Cone Benny. I liked the I like the opening. The opening's good. Yeah. Isn't there like a different opening for every episode or something? No, there's gonna be a different ending theme for every episode. Okay. Um because the end credits are just like black credits. Oh yeah. So they so get well, they, they went hard do, on the opening with all those references. Yeah, it's a bunch of references. The most obvious one is the Big Lebowski one. Yeah. It well to me. All the other ones are just like, it's a guy pointing a gun. Oh, it's Pulp Fiction. It's like, okay, yeah. I don't really think of that one. Um, there's a dude sitting on on like a bed with a bathroom in the background, but there's no body in the bathroom. So I don't fucking think of No Country for Old Men, but that's what it's referencing. And then it's like, <laughs> fucking like, with the fucking bowling ball. Yeah. Like, that's Jesus and Big Lebowski. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, I wasn't expecting, oh, it's references. I was just like, are these things that happen in the monk? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking bowling... Not even the bowling ball one? I, like, I, I just thought it was... Like, I, I didn't put two and two together that they were referencing movies, honestly. Like, if I was prepped with, oh, it's mostly movie references... Because I just am like, damn, they go bowling at some point in this show? <laughs> like, <laughs> is that a, fun... a bowling sports manga? No, but I'm like, bro, there are so many like, oh, this is the one episode where this happens in fucking anime, dude. Yeah. There's like, you don't think there could be a fucking bowling episode instead of like a hot spring episode? They could do that. They could do a bowling episode. Um, The first episode of Aruse Yasura. Oh, fuck, that did today. come out. Oh, wait, is it out today? Yeah. So you haven't watched it yet? I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Yeah, I want to watch that one. It's such a cute fucking, like... I don't know anything about it other yet. than, you know, like... She's a girl from space, and she's dressed inappropriately for where she's from. I honestly thought she was supposed to be, like, an Oni. Oh. Like, that that sort of archetype. Because she's wearing, like, a fucking, like, animal skin bikini, and she has blue hair with two little horns. She looks like the blue Oni. Is that my fucking... Is that my Rumiko... Is that who does it? Rumiko Takahashi? Yeah. I think that's... She just did Ranma. Ranma and Inuyasha. Yeah. You know what? I think she also did this one. That bitch is talented. She is, dude. Um, no, did she do Sailor Moon? No. Who did Sailor Moon? Different one. Good answer. Yeah, Rumiko Takahashi did create fucking Ursa Yasura. <laughs> wow. And she did That's really fucking like... crazy, dude. Yeah. That's why it looks like they're from like feudal, like a feudal fucking Japanese monster. Yeah, she not... did. She did fucking Inuyasha. She Ronma. did fucking Ronma one half. Yeah. Uh, she did Mao. Wait, Mao. It's a more recent one. Damn, you know what they should she they should fucking do? She's done tons of shit. Remake shit. Inuyasha. Yeah. Because I tried to watch that last year. It's a good show, Ugh. but it's yeah, it's a little old. It's very mon, yeah. It's like, but they like it's the same reason why they remade Sailor Moon. Yeah, it's it, it doesn't progress fast enough for a modern audience. Yeah, which is also why I think like Dragon Ball Z Kai didn't do enough. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go far enough. Yeah, but Dragon Ball Z is like overtold. Like I would say, remake original Dragon Ball, twenty four episodes. I think it's entirely possible. What do you what do you condense? What like fights or storylines do you condense? Other than like just make it faster. Um the carrot people. Like that's such a fr- that's rem- that's memorable because Bulma's in the bunny outfit and then also the comedy of having Oolong turn into Bulma in the bunny outfit because it's like Let's have Oolong, who is a male, disguised. So you could just replace the entire. You could just replace the entire arc with like. Oh, it's not an arc. It's like two episodes. The, t- the entire two episode arc with you cut to Bulma and she's like, "I'm in a fucking money outfit. How do I look?" I would. I would say. <laughs> I think there's two t- separate episodes that are like two episodes long each. Yeah. Where you could put those into one episode, like a double feature. Yeah. And then. Also, uh, the Muscle Tower saga with Goku climbing Muscle Tower. He fights, like, three guys in that tower Yeah, that don't mean anything. Like, they're they're nonsense characters and they suck. So you can just have them not really be speaking roles and Goku just beats them super fast. Well, th- th- still do the comedy gag aspect of it, but do one joke per character. When are they going to actually go all the way and, then do, and do Dr. Slump? Yeah, when's Dr. Slump super? Dr. Slump super. Actually, Dr. Slump wasn't super. Yeah, I think he showed up in the background, right? Cause Dr. No, no, there's a whole episode about her. Oh, really? With Raleigh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so I guess they retcon Dr. Slump as being in the Dragon Ball universe. Oh, no, it's always been there. Well, Dr. Slump predates Dragon Ball. Yeah, but it's like the, the Dr. Slump, the Penguin Village, that island, has yeah. always, had since, like, it was retconned into Dragon Ball Z. So, like, it's always been there. And it's pretty much, like, if a Raleigh is, knows about what's about to happen. Like, if she was there, a Raleigh could have beat Cell. Hmm. She could have stopped the android threat. But Penguin Village is hidden off the map in the world. So Can you go there in Kakara? No, but you can meet her. Oh, that'd be, oh, you can meet that's her cool. and her, like, mechanic slash dad. Because I think she's an android. Yeah. 
Um, or her two friends are androids, and she's like a cyborg. Yeah, I don't know actually anything about Doctor Slump. Yeah, me neither. It's a it's a comedy gag manga because, yeah. but that's like her power, like in the universe. It's like if it's a if it, it if it can turn into a slapstick joke, she can do it. Yeah, and she can cause it to happen. It's like the uh, it's like the Who Framed Roger Rabbit thing with the fucking hand. Yeah, but yeah, I think you could definitely condense so much of Dragon Ball into like one episode. Uh, like or. Goku's fight against Master Roshi could be like one beautifully animated fucking 24 minute episode. Well, 15 minutes after like all the bullshit that you have to do for every episode. Yeah. But then after that, it's like sick fight ending with Goku turning into the great ape and Master Roshi using the Kamehameha to cut his tail off. Yeah. Or Goku's fight with TN is like fucking seven or five to seven episodes long. Could be over. Could be one. Goku's fight with King Piccolo. Is just a slaughter fest with King yeah. Piccolo beating his ass like the whole time until Goku head Honestly, through his straight, chest. Honestly, straight up, and I'm going to come out here and, and say some fucking shit, but like modern anime fans don't want to watch one fight that lasts more than two episodes. Unless it's a fu- oh, more than two episodes? Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. Because you Unless can do a two parter. a banger? You can do a two parter if it's a banger. Yeah. Or with one character. Yeah. If you're going further, and I'm talking about the actual fight, of course you can have an extra episode or however many to like set up the arc and set up the world and blah 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 I, narrative I, shit. But for the actual fight, I do not want to sit through multiple episodes of like just fight scene and talking about the fight scene. Bleach, <laughs> right? Bleach, the fucking number one highest rated anime of all time. If Bleach, the, okay, Bleach absolutely needs a Kai. Yeah, no. like literally go back. But tell me that thing Ble- I fucking sent you, where Bleach in yeah, on Mal is right the now. number one highest, re- or specifically Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc because it's a separate show. It's technically listed because seasons on Mal are also listed as separate shows. And this yeah, is like, like Attack on Titan season, uh, the, season Attack three on, and shit like that. Uh, Attack on the Titan, final season, the part final three. season part three. <laughs> part four is coming out soon, guys. <laughs> fucking eight, se- four seasons as the final season. That was because of fucking COVID. Yeah, but Mostly. it's still ridiculous. It's yeah, it's stupid, but like there, you know, there's reasons. It's still ridiculous that you didn't just retcon it and go back and call it the fucking fourth season. Yeah, and and also, initially, there was too much content. Yeah, for the fucking for them to actually do that, there's like seventy two episodes in the final season. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, and I mean. Following season one, Wit Studio stopped making it. Or was it season two? Whatever. I think the only show, up until towards the end of it, I think Naruto is kind of evergreen. Like, if you skip the filler, like, and just watch the show, like, uh, all the canon episodes, it's pretty well paced until you get to the final arc. And then it's like, up. Oh, Filler episode, filler episode, random good episode, filler episode, filler episode, good filler episode, but still filler. Well, and I thought Naruto started doing, like, the One Piece thing where it's, like, they take an entire episode to do fucking... Like, nah, because Naruto, six inches the Naruto the manga ended it. in 2014, but Naruto the show didn't end until 2017. They were really? actually just kind of milking it. Then it, I feel like... I felt like the show ended around 2015 as well. Let me double check. Because feel... Boruto only being on for that short amount of time feels crazy. Because it feels like it's been on forever. Here, you know how we can figure this out? When did the last come out? Nice. What? You saw my skirt? Ugh. Yeah, I'm your standard Japanese teenage boy. I love panties. Bro, I don't care okay. about what's under them. I just want to <laughs> see the panties. I always find that so funny where people are like so fucking obsessed with like panties and bras. And I'm like... I mean, you know. I like them when they're on... The people? I don't. No, not even the undies. I don't know. Bras is <laughs> trick- Did you say head on? I said I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, modesty is all I want in this world. No, I don't know. I, mean, whenever, I prefer the naked. Whenever, like, yeah, no, naked's cool. Yeah. I lo- I just think that, like, bras and panties look nice. Sure, it on depends. The people. On- They're sexy. Depends but on do the I get? Do I want to see just, like... Underneath a woman's like fucking in between her legs? No, not really. Not if she doesn't want me to. Yeah, I just don't think it's like like upskirts. I don't think. Are anyway, speaking of anime, uh, this season there was a there's like also 
Ian, while I was pooping, sent me a thing about Berserk, which is funny because they're actually the Bez- doing no, a I recut. It's a thing about Chainsaw Man. It's about both, but they did. There, uh, there's like a. They're doing a recut of the three Berserk movies that are like actually well done oh, as a good. TV show, but you know you can just watch the movies; they're all on Netflix, and they were they were written and conceived as as the movies. three. Wait, the three good movies? Yeah. Oh, they just watched the fucking movies. Yeah. I thought it was like the the because I think there was a CG movie as well. Yeah. So okay. So here's here's what it is. So, uh, there's obviously the '97 Berserk TV show. Yeah. And then in the mid 2000s slash early 2010s, there was a trilogy of movies called Berserk: The uh, The Golden Age Arc. Um, and they're not CG movies. They're there are movies that have some CG and some 2D, right? Fine, Chainsaw Man. And then, uh, yeah, exactly. And then, and they're really, they were really high budget, so they actually look great. Um, and then there's Berserk 2016, 2017, etc. Right. Yeah. Um, so this 2022 season, um, they're they've just done like a re-edit with, I guess, maybe some touch-ups of those that trilogy of movies to be a TV show. But I mean, you know. If you want to watch a trilogy of movies recut into a TV show, you could simply watch the Mobile Suit Gundam: The Origin uh, show, which is fine. Is they're both good. What I like about the show is they actually made four OPs, even though it's only like a thirteen episode show. <laughs> There's four openings, um, because that's actually four like OVA episodes. But Gundam OVAs are always so much better because you fucking put on a one hour Gundam thing, and it's just like beautiful and gorgeous and well paced. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you're in, if you're interested in Gundam though, and you're like, I don't want to buy the Blu-ray versions of Gundam: The Origin, you can watch the TV version. Um, they're both good. Um, if you want a taste of, because Gundam: The Origin, by the way, is really good because it's a prequel to the original, so you don't have to know anything ahead of time necessarily. Except for when they show like cameos of characters who are important in Gundam, and you're like, who are these people? And it's like they're the fucking main characters of the show, like the original. <laughs> but yeah. Did you watch Gundam the Origin, Ian? No. You should, because it's about Char. No, I just don't care. <laughs> That's fair. If you want to watch Gundam, though, right now, Witch from Mercury is great, especially if you like high school type anime. Especially it, if you're a little fucking pervert. I saw a fucking listing that was like, why are all the women in this show fucking unattractive? And it's funny, because they like wear fairly... They're fairly baggy clothes. I saw this fucking. There's this guy on TikTok who was like, celebrities that glow down. And he showed like some child star. And it's like, they look like god awful dog shit now. And like. They just look all. They, I've seen this. They yeah. Just look like an old girl. Yeah. Well, like. Alty gothy. No, like fucking. Dyed scene, hair. Like scene. Yeah. Oh, but no, like. Same difference. Uh, like, cause, okay. Cause goth. Is, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. No, it sucks. I didn't care about Gundam. Uh, <laughs> goth is, you wear all black and like yeah. grayscale clothes, pretty much. Uh-huh. You look like a fucking Adams Family member. Okay. And then there's scene, which was like you mostly wore darker colors, but you wore like more some like vibrant patterns every once in a while, like that fucking like well, pastel goth. That's the word. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Thank you. There's such a variety of things. I was was going to make my way to it. I just couldn't remember it. I was just breaking them down in my head. It's like there's a word that goes before it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, She's like a pastel goth, but and like looks like a grown woman. And she looks great. I have, if I've seen the TikTok, she looks like... Yeah, Ugh. and everyone's just, like, reacting to the guy going, like, what do you mean? L take, L take. Well, not even L take. It's more like that's a child in the first picture. Yeah, I mean... You're saying that an older woman is less attractive than a child. I think he... I mean, to give a charitable thing, you just think, oh, cute kid, fucking degenerate adult. Um, You're still wrong, and it's still an L take, I even if glow, you're not thinking I, about sex. Because glow up just means looks better. I think it's supposed to be... I, but I feel like it's more of an attractiveness thing. Yeah, it could be. I'm just, I'm just trying to... I'm not saying that you look, like, more, like... I'm not saying like you have to be attractive to other people to glow up, but it's more like a, a self reflection sort of thing, mm-hmm. where it's like the woman on the second t- side is grown up. She's wearing what she wants. She's doing what she wants. The first picture is like a, a child yearbook <laughs> photo. Yeah, 
that's like also the whole thing is like like i saw a lot of people when it was like show your glow up and it was just like hot teens to becoming hot adults <laughs> are you saying you'd find teens hot you know what i mean sexy <laughs> <laughs> no okay but you know it's like the type of people that you look you yeah like you people, high people who when like you were in high school cut. you thought they were attractive yeah. yeah they were already hot kids yeah hot people I don't. I want to stop saying kids. <laughs> <laughs> they were already attractive people to, to their uh, demographic, <laughs> aka their age. Yeah. And pedophiles. <laughs> and then you and me. But, and then they. Grow, <laughs> <laughs> and then they grow up to be like twenty, and they're still hot. And it's like okay. You yeah, but now they're more attractive up, because stayed, they're you swung and You stayed on track. Are you saying you would in what for the underage version of them? I didn't say that. What are you? T- what are you? Me? Whatever. Me and Steve watch hot. anime. I'm saying you're still like that level of no, hot. Just like you've re- you. you've remained as an eight the yeah. whole time. <laughs> Dude, you can't rate children on fuckability. <laughs> other children can rate yeah. other children. Yeah, I'm saying you're not the child. eight rating by someone in the same grade. You just can't do them. I am. <laughs> You're just trying to put words in my mouth. Everyone else understands what I'm talking about. You are just so desperate to call me a pedophile right now. I'm going to say the N-word. No. No, I don't want to. You'll fucking forget to cut it out. I will because I'm fucking tired, dude. Yeah. All right, so speaking of sexy kids, um, Spy Family. Oh, yeah, Spy Family. Oh, dude. <laughs> It's a fucking baby. That's a little baby. Yeah, that is a joke. Um, whenever I go I on fucking like, uh, like you know the, the anime forums. No, like the hentai sites. Oh, people are like ew. That's so yeah, I know. fucking nasty. She's like four fucking years old. Oh, actually, she's five, but she's four. And she, it's, it's, that's so nasty, dude. Yeah, no, oh, like yours hot. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I already don't even like the idea. Like when people draw her as like an adult woman but then just make her like sexy it's like no that's a gremlin oh, child Anya. oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean like obviously she's gonna grow grow up like and obviously anybody we else all and become did it an to, adult. like everyone did it to naruto characters and like yeah but it was different because you were the same fucking age as naruto well Nobody's... i wasn't the one doing the art yeah right but you know what i mean like <laughs> you don't know how old that person who was drawing it in but sure, regardless or like raven from teen titans i get it yeah or starfire or starfire or wendy from gravity falls Okay, that's weird. I don't find that art style sexy. I just no. It's more about the attitude of the character, sort of thing. It's fair. It's kind of like the Lola Bunny thing, where like Lola Bunny does sexy poses and all that, but it's mostly about like the attitude she gives off. Yeah, that is really hot. Um, which no, that fucking some people just don't get that. I yep. don't want to fuck the rabbit. I want to fuck a woman who acts like that rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Also, I was correct. Naruto the manga ran from 1999 to 2014. Naruto Shippuden, the anime television series, ran from 2007 to 2017. Wow. The last... It the, feel, it Just tell me it doesn't feel like Boruto's been around longer than five years. Because it came out like the exact same time the, yeah, as the, the exact anime Yeah, the exact second ended. that fucking the Naruto anime ended. Yeah, yeah so the list of Naruto films. Like, the last came out in 2014 when... Um, yeah, because I remember the last coming out and adapting the end of Naruto before the fucking show ended. Not really the end of Naruto, but just like it takes place at the end of Naruto. What the fuck, actually? The Naruto anime... Yeah. ...doesn't end until 2017. Boruto, Naruto the movie, came out in 2015. That a year end. after the last... That, that's probably why. Because Boruto's been around for a, some yeah. time. Yeah, Boruto the anime started right after. Right after. But yeah. Boruto existed before Yeah, the anime started. That's so dumb. Yeah, I think it's so funny that you're like such a big Naruto guy and you hate Boruto. And I get it. It's because just Boruto is just a worse version of Naruto. Because it's like, it, <laughs> it, all it does is go like, Boruto is weaker and not as strong. Like, every kid in Boruto is a shittier version of their parent. Yeah. Where, like, in Naruto, from the beginning, you can see how, like, the kids are better than their parents. Except for Naruto, who you don't know he has parents until, like, episode 200. Yeah. Well, you don't know who his parents are, but... Also, there's, like, a... Yeah. But, like... Also, a lot of people make fun of Naruto for is actually just a thing that's consistent throughout... um, 
shown in anime, which is the uh, it starts off as hard work, and then over time you become the chosen one by reveal you actually were X or Y the whole time. Yeah, I would argue the one with Naruto. While it is still correct, it is still an ass pull that Naruto and Sasuke get all those power upgrades. Where Sasuke mm-hmm. gets a crazy one that's even better than Naruto's, but well, like, and again, like they retcon Naruto as to having like eighty five people watching him on the swing instead of him being on the swing because he's all by himself. It's just one. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole different. You know, it's like a metaphor. I'm metaphorically saying, like, oh, okay, yeah, all where, this shit going it's on like in the background. He still does the hard work to get up to those points and unlock his powers. But mm-hmm. then at the end of the show, it is literally like Jesus' kids. Like, would he have as much power if he just found out about the Jesus' kids thing like earlier? No. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like, he like, still had to tame the nine tails fox inside of him to be able to have that power. Yeah, but it's just like, you know, like, Goku, a lot of people are like, at the start of Dragon Ball, he's just a fucking weird kid. Dude, and Goku sees the Kamehameha stronger. performed once, and he instantly copies it. Yeah, right, but like, you know, again, like, it's like this whole thing where it's like, he just got there with fucking determination, and then, you know, yeah. in Z, it's revealed. He Goku like, trains actually, like... Actually, you know, he actually got there because he got a small million dollar loan from his dad. Like, yeah. you know. Goku <laughs> in, like, Dragon Ball, like, what, Ori- OP, like, beginner in One Piece... And Dragon Ball have, like, the same thing going on where they each learn through fights. Where, like, Luffy leaves that fucking, like, his home island and doesn't train once. He just eats and gets in fights and he learns from his fights. Goku leaves Grandpa Gohan's house on the mountain and then every fight he gets in, he learns how to do it. And then anytime he has to train, it's off camera. Right. Right. Creative Cloud is an update. <laughs> Good. Um, so, uh, like, it's all of his training is done off camera and doesn't matter as much. Yeah. But then One Piece Part Two, like uh, after Episode Five Hundred, is there's a training arc that happens over a two year time skip. You know, tra- training happened where that doesn't happen for Goku until after he beats King Piccolo, where he goes up back up to Kami's lookout and gets training from Mister Popo and Kami, and that's it. But then in Dragon Ball Z, it's like, actually, you're an alien of warriors that has a naturally higher power level. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, fuck. Do you know what? Because, uh, like, uh, sorry, I was just thinking about the Mal thing that we talked about, my anime list thing, in case you don't know what Mal is. It's a, yeah. it's a website. It for- is a viewer-voted poll for best anime, so whatever so, is, fl- like, the flavor of the month generally ends up super high on the list. Bleach. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I was just thinking... Chainsaw Man. Yeah, Chainsaw Man is the second highest ranked thing of this season. It's had one fucking episode. Yeah, I was actually listening... Chainsaw Man has been Chainsaw Man for maybe three minutes of footage. Yeah. Um, I have... I watched... I've been listening to a lot of Trash, t- trash Taste. Yeah, I like them. They're I listened good. to the episode that had Pro ZD on it. Yeah. And he kind of talked about his distaste for Mal. And how he uses, like, some anime... Other anime website for their yeah. top, like, 100. And how it's like... Mao is so like fan based yeah. that it's like whatever is popular it's a popularity contest. Whatever yeah. is doing the best is going to be the highest. Is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood the best anime of all time? No. Probably no. not. There's probably some like Is it a shit. great is it a solid nine out of ten anime? Yeah. Yes. Sure, I'm sure it's Is good. Attack on Titan good? If you like that piece of shit, sure. Right. It probably or, or pretty like good. The, th- the thing, and I said this I think I said this to Chris once just in IRL. I was like why do you think fucking the highest rated seasons of things like Gintama and Attack on Titan are like the fucking fourth season when if you like you can't just watch those shows yeah because like the only people watching Attack on Titan season three or four are people who loved Attack on Titan seasons before yeah like I'm sure Demon Slayer was super high up on fucking my anime list it's not fucking high up anymore right because it's not as good anymore because yeah. there's better shows. Long and also longtime fans don't love the newer shit as much as they liked the first season, right? Yeah. Which is different, but for for you anime know. fans and SNL fans go hand in hand, where eventually you get to a point where you're like, anime was better was when I was a kid and had time to watch anime. That's so f- yeah, that's so true. And also like, like if you're not familiar with that SNL also, thing, like, it's uh <laughs> everyone's favorite cast of SNL. Is the ones the one, from when they were kids. There was the one when they were like 16 years old. Yeah. Which is why, like, for us, it's like the Lonely Island, <laughs> like those yeah. years. Even um, though there's a good cast now who is all actively leaving because there's definitely a problem on the show. And also, 
Uh, the real ones out there, no. SNL was never good. If you want to be a dick about it. It's, it's bad. It's a bad show. I never liked it. Well, yeah, because you're not... And I them. went to where they filmed that shit on a school trip. Good for you. you went I went to, to 30 building. Rock. Yeah. You know what else they filmed in 30 Rock? They 30 probably Rock. didn't. Yeah, I was, I was going to say they probably filmed that on like a sound stage. I mean, their sound stage is in 30 Rock. Well, I mean like in California. <laughs> no, 30 Rock was filmed in New York. Yeah? Yeah, there's exterior During like scenes. the off-seasons of fucking SNL? No, there's just fully exterior scenes in that show. Oh, no, I know. But like the sound stage they use in the show to like show oh, the Oh, they just show. have a second sound stage. They have multiple sound stages. They could just rent them yeah. out. Anyways, that's a good show. I don't want to yeah. re. I don't think I'll ever rewatch that show, even though I. Because you want to remember. Yeah, we said this. I, the yeah, I was thinking it so fondly. It's but like, like Scrubs. The, the thing with Bleach being the highest rated anime of all time, you gotta watch 270 <laughs> shitty episodes to get there, and also realistically 120. Also realistically, episodes. even if the Thousand Year Blood War is like the best animated, the best storyboarded, the best key animated show with. T- impeccable direction it's still you. fucking bleached <laughs> it's still written by it, chite kubo and isn't it like an arc that in the manga was like not that good yeah because he um i think it's this problem started in the iran car arc which was like the previous super big arc that they did it's probably the biggest arc of the series yeah is that uh he made too many characters mm-hmm like, the guy loves to do character designs. This is why I, uh, I always say whenever we talk about Bleach. That Just give Tite Kubo a writer. and He should have a writer incredible. or someone to help write. Yeah. Like, he, he, they should do a collaborative effort. Like, fucking, like, the guy who does fairy tale. He should be Monty. You know. <laughs> Rip in peace. Um, yeah, someone else should write the story. Yeah. And then he... Or he should help with the story, but someone yeah. else should write, like, the dialogue and all that. And, like, the arcs and stuff. Yeah, so, like, in the first arc, like, the first bit of Bleach, like, you get to the Rukia save arc or whatever. Just get... I bet you... I like, bet you fucking Obata, the the Death Note writer who didn't draw a Death Note, could probably team up with Tite Kubo and make something pretty interesting, even if not great. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, so the first arc, like, the Rukia rescue arc or whatever, yeah. it's like, you got Ichigo, yep. Chad, Sato, if you are watching the Japanese, Orihime, uh, Uryu... And, like, that's it. And Yoruichi shows up eventually, but, like, she's a mentor character who doesn't really fight. And Kisuke and his, like, filler characters aren't there the whole time. Uh, like, they show up at the end, I think, but they're, like, they're not They're not there. important throughout. And then after that arc, it's like, okay. But then through that arc, they introduced each of those characters mm-hmm. fights a super important character. Like, Ichigo gets fucked up by Renji at the start of the, seer, uh, the, start of the arc. Yeah. And then Byak- and Byakuya as well. And then after that, it's like, oh, they're not even the top. They introduce Aizen. They introduce all of Aizen's underlings. They introduce the the Gotai 13. So that's 26 new important characters they introduce. Because each of those characters have a captain, and each one has a vice captain. So then after that arc, you get towards the Iran car stuff. Yeah. And what do you do? You introduce 20 more characters. <laughs> That are input that are like too many people. Yeah, but and then it's like what? And then oh, it was it's more than twenty six actually because um, uh, Kenpachi Zaraki, the sickest of all captains, yeah, has two underlings that become important named characters as well. Everyone has like these under these random underlings as well that become important. And then you you're like, bro, isn't this supposed to be like a secret society below J- like within Japan where like no no shit- it's a it's a ghost thing. Yeah, oh. but like there's it's like, an alternate. It's like it's it's a heaven. Because uh, yeah. I thought I thought Bleach was like a whole thing where it's like secretly, you know, it's the real world. But w- when you're not around, when you're not looking, there's this stuff going on in the real world that we no, live in. It's like it, the things that happen in the soul world or whatever oh. get a, a, happen in the real world. So like when Ichigo leaves his body and becomes a soul reaper of <laughs> Shinigami <laughs> is actually like what they're called in Japanese. But so no, it's just like a, it's just reaper it's not even like a yeah, soul reaper but they call it a soul reaper to make it like english anglicized but all, yeah to match the mouth flaps a bit more shinigami soul reaper yeah um bah, 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 when bah. he turns into that if you don't have spiritual power which most living humans do not mm-hmm. you can't see him uh. so it looks like your friend just goes like like touches this fucking like weird diamond thing to his chest and then just passes out but really he just like left his body oh so it's like yeah yeah that's an old so rukia is a dead woman 
<laughs> who uh, almost dies as Ichigo is getting attacked because Ichigo, for reasons they explain a lot later, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna spoil Bleach. I'm gonna spoil this part of Bleach right now. Ichigo's father is a Soul Reaper. Oh, okay. He's been de- he's dead. He's been a dead man the whole time. He goes to the human world and falls in love with a human. I will not spoil that part about it because that's important for the Thousand Year Blood War arc on who on who she actually is. Uh-huh. So he has Ichigo so- and his twin younger daughters. And but it's like how how did he do it? He's dead. So He's he living inside it. of a fake body. <gasps> they have a they have a fake body system in the world called Gee Guys, <clears> and <throat> the um, Rukia has one to exist in the real world because so his family gets attacked. But you guys aren't supposed to be able to fuck, but her his dad did, or it's just you, they can fuck. Uh, it just doesn't sound right that they can fuck because they're living in dolls. Oh, but it's like somehow his is like a super advanced one. Oh, so he's but, just, okay. yeah. So Ichigo, um, his like he's the son of a soul reaper, so he's always had this latent power. He was always been able to see ghosts, and he uh, he gets attacked because of that by hollows, which are spirits that don't get like peacefully brought over by soul reapers. Oh, okay, okay. So Soul Reapers just have to do this thing where they, like, tap you on the forehead with, like, the hilt of their so blade. So it's kind of like fiends in Final Fantasy X. If they're not sent, they can... Their souls can become... Can, like, be going monsters. Sure, if that makes sense for people who've played Final Fantasy X. I think it is. Um, yeah, so after, like... So Ichigo almost dies. Rukia almost dies trying to stop Ichigo from almost dying. Fucking Christ. Well, you broke it? No, my phone's just sliding around and I keep grabbing and I pulled the cord that time. Um, so Rukia in a a fit of desperation just goes like I can temporarily give you my powers if you stab yourself with your sword and Ichigo's like whoa that's fucked up well with her sword and she stabs him with the sword and they're supposed to get like this little bitch sword but Ichigo gets like a fucking he gets the giant sword he gets the giant sword which keeps looking cooler and cooler every time (laughs) but yeah a thousand year blood war probably good I don't know it's still bleach it's yeah. not the best anime. I can tell you, one episode of that show I think is out, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, right? Yeah. I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, probably not the best anime I ever made. It's, what it is doing is reminding people that... Bleach is cool. And Bleach they is were super ones. cool and looks really cool. And this is getting some beautiful animation. And Ichigo yeah. and all the characters in Bleach, especially like the main cast... And are T-Tay very Kubo. well done. They are yeah. good characters. The story that Tite Kubo writes is, is bad. Yeah. <laughs> but Tite people, um, Tite Kubo, kind of this coming back. Uh, he, you know, he's saying is like, if this does well, he'll probably do more Bleach or he'll like, do the sequel series that was teased the, at the end of Bleach. Yeah, continue the stuff because um, Burn the Witch is also in the Bleach universe. Yeah, it's like the fucking it just takes place in England. That's the one that's like a secret society. I feel like that could be like a sequel series to Bleach, actually. It takes place after. It just takes place like... No, but I mean like a super, an actual sequel series where it's like Soul Society is now like the flip side of the Earth. Like how they have like London and under London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Burn the Witch, as somebody who watched like the t- first two episodes of that three episode show, it's, it's fine. It's like, okay. It's really cool. <laughs> I love it. There's it's cool such parts. A good sh- it's got great designs and it has a lot of really cool world building inside of it and also has a fun power structure. It's just none of the characters are good. <laughs> yeah, because they don't flesh out the characters because they're too focused on the entire world. Yeah, but it's just they like, try and flesh out an entire world in three episodes instead of talking about the characters. Also, they don't include the original one shot in there, which explain which has a lot more of the characters. Oh, so I, like, I also just didn't like the, especially the guy. Yeah, no, he sucks. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not. Good. He's annoying, and it's not good because also I thought it's he'd like, be fun because well, I liked his design. And he seemed like, oh, he's kind he of a slacker, like, but he's a slacker in an annoying way. He looks like Ichigo if Ichigo was a fucking loser. Yeah, but I I kind of like losers as a loser. Yeah, Ichigo's but... like way too is like especially in the times where he came out, it's like that was like the Naruto era. Yeah, where like with Naruto in One Piece, where your protagonist is either goofy or a fucking loser. And, but then Ichigo comes out and he's effortlessly cool, but he's caring. Do you know what I like? I like that the main character of Chainsaw Man... main character of Chainsaw Man the is the most loser. Yeah, oh man, it gets even better. He's like he's he's a loser in a way that's great because I look at him and he's somebody's like, I'll give you a dollar 
to eat a cigarette. Yeah. And he goes, a fucking dollar. <laughs> yeah, and he does it. Yeah. He's also sold his eye and like one of his kidneys yeah. and a testicle. Yeah. Which he, he gets all that stuff back. Yeah, yeah you could tell because he got an eye back. And he's also, in, in the opening, he's all perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't, <laughs> I think they might have changed this line. I really feel like they did. Uh, like, you know the part where he's, like, crouched over? He's like, I just want to have a girlfriend or whatever? Yeah. I think the original line is, I just want to feel some tits. <laughs> it just, it could just be the translation. Yeah, maybe. Could be a, a choice in, in localization or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to watch, I don't know, maybe I'll watch the Bleach new episode tonight. Because I'm off tomorrow. I'm definitely going to watch Uruse Yusura tonight. Yeah, I, because I... It's, it's on like, High Dive, I think. Yeah, I'm going to fucking steal it. Okay, um, dude. The uh, well, like the people I'm playing Overwatch with when I get home are like most of the people we watch anime with. Yeah. So I'll probably be like, all right, let's watch the Spy Family episodes we missed, and let's watch uh, like Bleach and Chainsaw Man. Also, uh, if you want to know what I watched last season for anime, I think I already mentioned it. Licorice Recoil is an amazing show. Uh, it's really fun and cool. Um, and uh, I also watched uh, Call of the Night, which is pretty good. But I didn't watch like, anything last season. Like I, I skipped all those shows. Um, I I watched both of those after almost all the episodes were out. Mm-hmm. Smart. Um, but yeah, because uh, oh wait, was Kaguya last season? I think maybe I don't know because I think I watched all of that and then I read all of it. That's an amazing mob. Also, show. there's more mob psycho this season, but I'm gonna wait until it's all out. Did and it? also, they fucking you know disrespected the SAG. And, yeah, and got rid of Kyle McCarley, who is the English voice. Of- you could just watch it subbed. Yeah, but I I would I was watching the dub the whole time actually like uh, um and Kyle McCarley who is nine S from Near Automata is uh Mob in Mob Psycho yeah. you know he's a great voice actor because uh, he voiced nine I, well, I did watch him in a Mob yeah uh I did, I didn't really get that much out of it but like I'm just saying because you you played fucking Near Automata yeah, you know he's a yeah. good voice actor he's an, I'm saying that the character he put like the character of Mob is not as like it has a lot of depth. Or at least it doesn't from what I watched. He does, but it's, again, like, it's, you know... I think Mob is a much deeper character than, like, Saitama. Oh, absolutely. Um, he's not, like, the deepest character, but that's kind of what's fun about him. Is yeah. like. Did you watch the new Spy Family episodes? No, I, I didn't even finish the first season. Ah. Because I, I, I passed it in the manga, and then I got kind of got bored in the manga when it's just about the... Her and the boy kid. I just I don't care. Yeah, those aren't. Those, that's not my favorite part. I'm just arc. wait. I'm just like crossing my fingers. I'm like, let the fucking do parents find out. Yeah, right. I, like, I want the Mr. Like, and Mrs. Want... Smith moment. Yeah. Okay, that's what we talked about when I was watching the show first because I like really was into it right when it started coming out, and I was like, this entire show is building up to the Mr. and Mrs. Smith thing, and you know that's going to happen the second after they actually fall in love for real instead of being in a relationship. Like yeah, a which, relationship. like, once, once, like, the moment, like, truly starts happening where he's, like, looking at her a bit, like... Yeah, right? Uh, like It's like, oh damn. Because you know that's what the entire show is building up to. That's the fucking key, right? Any... Sto- any here's, here's a bit of writing advice for you, and this seems obvious, but some people just don't think about stories at all. A story in which a secret is had is building up to the moment that the secret is revealed. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the purpose of having a secret in a story. It's like a Chekhov's gun, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I so for Spy X Family, I just, you know, you want to you wanna see, like, A, I want the two of them to fall in love because I think they're both, you know, cool. Yeah, and I want them to fall in love, but you know, the second when they actually catch for real feelings and they start like making out, and he's fucking fingering her, she's gonna look in the drawer and find his gun, and then she's gonna be like, "What?" Or that's like the moment where he's gonna like slip up and like she finds yeah. out or something, or use his original name, like what, what is it, Shadow or whatever, Twilight, Twilight. Yeah, yeah. They actually did a there is a they did a backstory arc. It was like three chapters long that explained like how he got into the spy business no yeah i heard about that because it's kind of hinted at that he like was like fucked up had a fucked up backstory no it's in like the first uh, chapter where it's like he's a lone child standing on a destroyed street yeah 
Um, but he's like, yeah, he had an abusive childhood. His uh, his dad like left or whatever. And when the, the and during like an actual war, he's like he signed up for the war, but he signed up. He, he did the Steve Rogers thing, yeah, where he used a fake name and a fake age because he was uh, he he signed up at the same time as like his childhood friends, mm-hmm. and they all uh, they they were older than him, and they mentioned that they were like, oh, I thought you were older than us, and he's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> But the the fun thing they do there is, um, since he's using a fake name, everyone in the military only knows him of that name. The records of the house that exist for him are gone. Mm-hmm. So when he, the the soldiers that were like his childhood friends talk to him, they black out his name. Oh, uh, like it's redacted. That's yeah, funny. and then they die like a page later, and then it's like, oh, no one exists who knows his real name anymore. Yeah. So that's why he's just nothing but it's good it goes like into the backstory of his character it tells how he meets like frankie mm. uh yeah but uh i'm enjoying i'm enjoying the dog stuff i love the dog he's cute. oh the dog in the show now yeah the, that's the start of season two or okay. part two of season one it's a lot of episodes that they put out in one year for that show 24 no because they did 24 in part one no they did 12 Nathan, the newest episode is episode 14. Really? Yeah. Damn. They did 12 episodes. They teased the dog in episode 12. They teased the dog at the end of episode 11, and then episode 12 is like a filler episode based <laughs> off of like the shorts that they did. Oh, I liked the shorts in the manga. It's fine. It's Although just... Although somebody pointed out that they're like, they don't make sense because one of them takes place in the summer, despite the fact that the you know, show can't yeah. take place so in the So then summer. episode 13 starts, and it's they them going shopping for a dog. Yeah, and then they get um, yeah yeah yeah. And there's actually the, the fake blood. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. I read the manga. Yeah. Again, I read the manga pretty far past that point. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, oh, and then um, the girl who's like in love with him, the other agent that's in love. Yeah. With him, oh, she's great. the 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 opposite. His Yuri. Yeah. Uh, she's in the opening, so she'll probably be immediately she'll be there after the dog joins. Yeah, yeah, because she is. Yeah. Is that a, I don't know. It just things happen. I read these things so long ago. Oh yeah, yeah. No, the only no, thing she, I, she, I only she shows up like around the same piece. time as the dog. Yeah. Well, actually, she showed up on the in the anime like a few episodes before the dog. I think. Maybe they do. They were. But doing she's not as important. Order. She's like a more side character, and she becomes more important after the dog is, is established. Yeah, she's very much just like Yuri. Yuri's not important either. Yeah. You, I'm, I'm still at the, the point where I'm at now. I think he's just becoming important, but it's like he's still just a dude who wants to fuck his own sister. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. I get dude. the, I get the idea. I have siblings. I, I like the. He doesn't want to fuck his own sister, but he only want. He's the he only one who wants to have his sister's want to fuck attention. His own sister, dude. It's just no. It's like twit. Yeah, it's a twisted thing where he doesn't think he wants to fuck his own sister, but, but he clearly he does. He wants to be. He wants to be married to his. He sister. wants to be. He wants to be her one and only. Yeah. Yeah. And Creepy. her just, I, to I just be like her, he has like mommy issues. It's with it's played a bit too much for laughs for me to not feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, it says the anime thing where it's like, isn't this funny? Isn't this and it's funny like, and no, kind it's of normal? Deranged. Yeah, it was funny like never. Like the, okay, the idea that you could play with like a really if it, okay. Here's me being like normal. If a really fucking young sister doesn't get it, and they're like young, young, like uh-huh. doesn't understand that you can't marry your own family members. And because it doesn't understand that, like, marriage equals sex. Yeah, man, I'll expose myself. I said it to my sister. Yeah, you want to marry your sister. I was four. That's, like, not uncommon for a very young child to say. I was four, she was nine, and she was just like, ha, funny. And I'm right, like, like okay. yeah, you didn't want to fuck your sister. You didn't get that marriage equals fuck because you were four. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just it's thought, very, oh, okay, if you, you like a person. was very ace Huh? You just erased asexual people. Well, asexual people can't get married legally, and we both know that. Yeah, you're right. They have no rights. Yeah. And they, they are shouldn't. the new women. <laughs> the new women and Italians. Yeah, true. Asexual people shouldn't have rights. <laughs> okay, let's stop that one. <laughs> they shouldn't, dude. Yeah. I'm very anti-asexual. Mm. Just learn to have sex. <laughs> just learn to want to fuck. It's fine. Bro, just do it even if you don't want to. <laughs> 
<laughs> do it if it sucks. <laughs> do it even if you don't like it and you don't feel like it. Even if you're at getting all. like, v- <laughs> what is it, vagismas or something? Well, that, okay. Non asexual people could get vagismas and still have sex. No, no, I'm saying it sucks so much and it's f- so shitty for you that it, you're getting it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> you have another hole that can open up easier. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you watch anything else? No, but I did play all of Trails from Zero. Trails from Zero? Yeah, it's in the Trails series. Okay. So it's the it's the fourth game in the franchise after the three Trails in the Sky games. Okay. Um, and it's fantastic. Um, and I'd highly recommend it. It's so comfy. I like blasted through it, dude. There's a couple days where I did more than like I think about ten full hours of playing the game in a day. Damn, this game's old. It's like technically old, but it also just came out because it this is it's only been like large for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nihon Falcom. Nihon Falcom. But yeah, it's in the Trail series. Um the this game and its direct sequel are the only two games that are like they that are not the only, but these ones got skipped over by uh X Seed because they knew um so they did the first three games, the Trails in the Sky trilogy, but uh, and and those saw some success on Steam and uh, and PS3 in North America, but they didn't sell super well. And also, you know, Falcom games, specifically Trails games, have a lot more text than most RPGs because every time six inches of story happens, every single NPC in the entire game has new lines to say about it, um, which is great. It makes the world building incredible in this franchise. But it also means they take longer to localize and are more expensive, and they're already fairly niche. Um, so they skipped Trails from Zero and its sequel, Trails uh, to Azure, um, to go straight to Trails of Cold Steel because the Trails of Cold Steel games um, are very Persona esque, and uh, they were being localized in the time of you know Persona Four blasting in v- Vita sales um, in North America. So like. You know, they knew, oh, we could easily squeeze some more sales out of this if we just skip these two games in the middle. But of course, those two games are extremely important to the plots of Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4. So Western uh, fans of this franchise essentially got spoiled on Trails from Zero and Trails of a- uh, to Azure um, by playing Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 as they released in like 2019 uh, and twenty. 20- 20 and so finally uh Nis america is localizing these two games that are in the middle that are important to the overall story um and trails from zero came out just recently trails to azure is coming out sometime next year probably fairly early um and yeah and uh, they're they're good they're good games and i'd highly recommend them um where was i going with this i had a third thing to say but i don't remember what it was You'll get there. Anyway, <laughs> the the trail series is really cool. They're fairly niche. If you want to start from the b- very beginning, you can. You should start at Trails in the Sky one, two, and three, which are only on Steam and PC right now. There's no real console version. Um, if you want, to, if you're like, hey, I don't want to play these slightly older games. I want to play the one that just got re-released because um, it's on console and you know and especially whatever whatever trails from zero you can start there just know that like part way through the game protagonists and other supporting characters from the trails in the sky games are going to show up and you will kind of not have the full context for parts of the story that's fine because you can still get through it because as far you will match excuse me oh my god i whistled there um, you will match the knowledge level of the protagonists of Trails from Zero because they're unrelated to the first three games. They're new, and they meet the main characters of the first three games, right? So that's fine. You can still go in with no knowledge. But if you're going to play the uh, Cold Steel 3 and 4, you need to have played all the games beforehand or else you're going to be super lost because 3 and 4 of Cold Steel have a trillion characters from all across the franchise and then the upcoming Trails from Reverie which is like the end of this entire story arc starting in 2004 and going till now which is coming um, I think next year that when that game comes out it's like 
you need to know fucking everything in order to have full context. So just be aware. Um, but if you want low commitment, the first three games are always on sale on Steam, whereas the newest one, the the Zero, Trails from Zero, um, is like 50 bucks. So, you know, you can start with the earlier games that are like less polished than this one, uh, or you can jump into this one, that's fine. Or you can jump into even Cold Steel 1 before like trying to go back and understanding them. Mm-hmm. But I would, I would give my seal of approval to... Um, especially Zero and Cold Steel 1 are the games I've played the most and enjoyed the most. Oh, also, the actual plot of the game is that you're, you know, in a country that's sandwiched, a small country that's sandwiched in between two big countries, and uh, you are a member of uh, a squad on the police force that was kind of created to give the police force a better rep because you actually help people instead of, you know, Ooh. be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it's a turn-based RPG. The game mechanics are really good. The characters are really good. The world building's incredible. This the plot is fairly episodic. And also, um, partway through the game, you like adopt a child. <laughs> um, your your team, your group of eighteen to twenty one year olds that you're friends with. Does the child fight? The child does not fight. But but she's voiced. Not as good as Fire Emblem Awakening. <laughs> she's voiced by Haruka's voice actor from uh, the Yakuza games. And she's super cute. Just like Haruka. Just like Haruka, dude. My daughter. My actual daughter. This girl, also very cute. You also get a wolf. But yeah, the, the little girl doesn't fight. I think she does fight in later installments. Yeah. But when she, in, in this installment, she does not fight. Because mm. she's a baby. Yeah. A little baby. She's a little baby girl. Yeah. Yeah, um, I would highly girl. recommend if you play these games to either play to play them with a guide because there's lots and lots of fucking hidden content that is not directly shown to you that's like really impactful. Um, because again, every like NPC, almost every NPC like is a person who like lives a life and has opinions on politics and and the economy and shit like that. Like they really do fucking great world building in these games. It's a JRPG. No, more than normal JRPGs even. Like way more. Like in a JRPG, normally you go to the fucking item shop and they go, "You want to buy a potion?" You go to the item shop and this and they're like, "Did you read the news? The fucking there there's like a border crisis going on." <laughs> like holy shit. You know, or like... You're like, please, I just want to spend my money. No, you. it's optional to talk to them. You can just buy wow. shit. But, like, if you talk to them, they'll be like, oh, my fucking kid just joined the, the fucking... I don't know, the police academy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then you talk to them a month later and they're like, my kid fucking flunked out, or whatever. Like, <laughs> there's little stories going on in the background of completely optional non-important conversations where you're like you know you, like all these characters like it, it's like even though the game's graphics are like super rudimentary because it was on like PSP and shit like it's it's one of the most like lived in real worlds in any RPG more, more than any fucking stupid ass Fallout game no one has ever said yeah or Fallout Skyrim. feels lived in <laughs> or Skyrim or whatever yeah they're fucking NPCs yeah like they're very like you know uh, it's just it, it just feels again very lived in although I got the fucking didn't get enough hidden relationship number points to get any at Buddy's ending on this playthrough that Dude, I played at the game suck I know oh one of the four main characters is Randy and he's a he's a man and he's just like such a bro so you got your main character who's like kind of generic RPG hero guy. He fights to protect others, right? That classic thing. But one of the guys is like, he's just a bro. He's like, I read fucking porno magazines. I like going to the casino. I like going to the bar. But I'm like a bro. I fucking like hanging out. We're all friends here. Oh, I'll, I'll wingman you to flirt with girls and shit. Like, he's just like <laughs> such a bro. It's great. Just a, just a good character. Nice. Like, all the characters are good, but he's great. Anyway, yeah. Trails from Zero. It's a great game. Buy yeah. it. Make Nis America do localize more of these fucking video games and faster. Because they're good. Yeah. 
You play any games recently that you want to talk about for oh, too over, long? Overwatch 2. Oh, yeah, you already did. I'll, I'll talk about one last thing. Mm-hmm. I read this new manga on Shonen Jump. Is it the one about fighting dicks? No. Dick I Fight didn't. Island? No. <laughs> That's not in Shonen Jump. <laughs> uh, it's called Heart Gear. Mm-hmm. And it's a story about the last human left on Earth and who who is being raised by robots. <laughs> Oh, that sounds cool. And all the robots are like near automata esque, <gasps> but a little more like anime. So, like, so the concept is is there is a young girl. I don't know how old she's supposed to be, but every single time she feels, because everyone else around her is massive, everything yeah. is super tall. Like her caretaker, care keep caretaker, yeah, is definitely a giant robot, but he looks big. But then there's a hot robot man, hot anime robot man who becomes her protector. Yeah. Um, is also very tall. So she's like at his waist level, but she look like... So that would make her like 11 or 12. No, but she's definitely... I don't know. Just the way they portray her. It's it's subjective. It's there subjective and she's definitely supposed to be young and innocent, but it's like... There's this one shot where she's like washing off in the fucking like lake, and it's like, what the fuck are you wearing? She's not like excessively horny. It's not like you see her fucking cheeks or anything, or like. So she's probably out. more of a teenager. She's probably fifteen. And also, I wouldn't call this like I wouldn't call her outfit inherently sexual. It's just like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Sorry, I just got hit with a big question. Are you are you fucking Doc gay? Mark. I just search up heart gear. Yeah, so it's uh, this girl. She's being raised by a robot. Uh, There is these... They call them... They literally just call them like insane machines. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like the machines in Nier. Where a lot of them have like lost their fucking like... Oh yeah, I see it. That's like a fairly grown up outfit fit on her yeah she's probably a teenager and they just draw all the men taller than her to yeah make, like them so but it also does big. the near automata horny thing so that's like her protector but when he first shows up he's a giant fucking block and her father figure caretaker guy gets fucking killed uh, in front of her and he's just a giant block and then it looks like he gets killed and the hot dude version of him pops out so yeah, then like he comes across like things like that. She's That's really, Gundam as fuck. Like they, they're all really like cool mech designs. See the lady with the huge tits there? The, 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 you one? were on it. No, no, no. Right, right there. So <laughs> he punches her tit, and it like she goes like, oh, he hit my shock compressor. <laughs> it's like it's the near automata horny thing where it's like, other than that shock compressor line, they don't try and justify any of this. Uh. Same with, like, the lady with, like, the cool legs. Mm. If you scroll back up a bit. That uh, that one. She's just a... She was made to be a maid. Like, that was her base level programming. But she got, like, combat legs put on her to protect the girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it's like, she's the last human. People know... No one know. Well, people are finding out she's the last human now. But their objective is to take, like, the memory core from her uh caretaker and get it put in a similar model so he comes back okay but then you know it's the discussion of the soul and all that yeah. like they meet up with a guy uh who's like he the, he just like calmly speaks to them and he's just like i was a human i know that you I, he looks at her and says i know that you're a human because before i was a famous biologist who i was dying and so i got put uh, into that, this it, but it's not like the whole like my brain is inside this robot it's, it's my memories his memories yeah so his he has like a soul on there but he's dead yeah but he doesn't he did they try they try to ask him about it he's just like i don't like to think about it too much <laughs> mm. or else i might truly go insane because the whole thing in this in the show is there or like in the manga it's definitely going to be a show yeah like it's it made it past 12 chapters it's going to be <laughs> two Three shows, three manga I was reading last year all got yeah. canceled at the twelfth chapter. It was crazy. Um. So yeah, it's like the way the the way the machines become insane machines is because a human gave them 
uh, like an order before they died. And then they get stuck in a logic loop on the order. And nothing can change it unless they're human. Did you see that this is coming out in January? Yeah, I saw it. Um, Looks pretty good. It looks just like kind of whatever, in my opinion. Apparently, stuff's going to be different. It like, you know, they they did this like very intentional shot by shot, you know, thing yeah. in the trailer. But they said that it, that's why it has like a different name, like one point one A, because Yoko Taro is like, what's the point of making it if it's going to be exactly the same? So you know, it'll probably have cool lore and shit. You know, it's near. We'll probably watch the first three episodes and just replay the entire game all over again. <laughs> Which is good. If anything makes me do that, it's still not bad. Right? This is my Cyberpunk Edge Runners, which I have not watched yet. I do, yeah. Same I wanna... with the new Part 6 JoJo episodes. Yeah, I, I, I gotta watch both of those, but also it's like... I kind of want to just... I want a Mandalorian. And I want to sit down and watch them all mm. like at once. But I just don't have the time and... Or the attention span. Right now, yeah. Well, it's like, Edge Runner seems like the kind of show where it's like, I should be paying, giving my full attention to this. It looks really Same good. Same with JoJo. I've only heard good things But it's about like, it. I'm just going to watch it in English so I can watch it on my second monitor. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that. I got to yeah. watch the actual show. Especially Edge Runner is like, it's both a visual spectacle and also seeing as a lot of people have had like a huge emotional reaction to it, I think it's probably also sad. <laughs> yeah. Also because nobody has a happy ending in Night City. Yeah, like, great. Spoilers. Thanks, guys. Spoilers. Spoilers. It's a cyberpunk show, and those usually don't end up good for the fucking characters that you like. Right? Yeah. Like, you know. I guess Ghost in the Shell has a happy ending-ish. Yeah. Like... I guess near ending E is happy enough. Well, that's not cyberpunk, but yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not cyberpunk. I just, man, I, I don't want, like, I don't need a cyberpunk game that goes super into the fucking, like, in-depth shit. Yeah. You know what I actually think would be cool? What? If, do, you, do you remember Fallout 3? This little known indie title called Fallout 3? I only played, like, uh, an hour or two Fallout okay. 3. Okay, so when Fallout 3 first came out... Mm-hmm. If you did once you did the final mission, your game was over. Because oh, and you, you just could not explore you, the world. You could not because oh, you die. You die. Yeah. So if yeah. you start the final scenario and you save inside the final scenario, you're fucked. Yeah. You can't get back out. But then they uh, made the far harbor. No, not far harbor. That was a later deal. The pit. That's not the pit. Uh, steel, steel something. Anyways, one of the broken deals, steel. Broken steel. Thank you. So broken steel. Is a DLC that takes place after the story. So you oh. were able because it was Point Lookout, um, the Pit, and then Broken Steel. So if you didn't have a save file pre that pre Broken mm-hmm. Steel, you could just you couldn't do Point Lookout and fucking uh, oh, the Pit sure. without restarting the whole game. So then Broken Steel came out and the up the level cap to thirty and had a post game thing. Yeah. Because it was a lot more content in Broken Steel as well. as a, Oh, it was Operation Anchorage was one of them as well. Oh, okay. Maybe Point Lookout was after. Whatever. So they did that so that there was you just continued to explore the mission after the game. I think it would be cool is if they made a DLC for Cyberpunk. Yeah. Like after the one they already have planned. Make another one where you can like end your character. <laughs> <laughs> and then have that be important for the future of Night City. Uh, like, because right now it's like, so you do the final mission in Cyberpunk, and it's like you, no matter what you find out, you only have six months to live. Yeah. Just the difference is, is do you have friends or not, or, or do you have friends, or are you stuck in the existential nightmare that is the space station? Right. Yeah. So, what if they did a thing where it's like, if you choose the one to work with your friends, which obviously you can at any time because the game does like the Zelda thing. Yeah. Where it's like it's just right before. Mm. like always um so like do with fucking mission or do that mission finish it with your friends and then after that you go and you like live your next few months or whatever and then it's like you have a month left like you're f- totally fine and you can go out with like a bang for that character yeah and you could like shape night city into a way that like is meaningful for like whatever sequel they try and make a 2077 yeah because the groundwork's already there. 
the world's already there. You just have to make the game not fucking suck. Like for a season. Are you ready for a really cyberpunk ass line that I'm about to say? Yeah, what? You can't fix Night City. But you can <laughs> but you can you can get in a car accident so bad they'll never scrape you off the pavement. <laughs> That's an ending. That's the best ending you can get in this fucking hellhole of a fucking country. Like, that's a that's a cyberpunk ass line right but there. Like, you know how like Johnny Silverhand goes out destroying the goes fucking, out with the bank. Yeah, yeah, and obviously it led to nothing and actually made it worse. Yeah, but like, what if you, they give you a fucking moment when it's like, no, you can take it to them. Yeah. You can fuck up Arasaka, or you can either fuck up Arasaka. You can, ma- or you could try and like, or you do the stupid thing and like side with a different corpo. And then the next game, it's like depending on how on how like, you ended, which it, players you, chose what, slight, or like yeah. which ending the people liked. The there's game. Slight, there's deviations in the story and world building. No, no, I'm saying that they choose a canonical one for the next game. Oh, uh, or that, yeah. Because for all we know, that the they're like this is coming off the uh, assumption that yeah. there would be a next cyberpunk game, which, which like, there is. It was announced. Oh, it was announced. Yeah, can't wait to see it in twelve years. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like the, let's just change up Night City. Like they said, they're gonna something. have a multiplayer element in their upcoming games. Co-op, co-op. That's all I want. I don't want fucking a uh, shooter. Yeah. I don't want a battle royale. I want co-op. What about just Dark Souls multiplayer, where somebody can just show up and try to fuck you up? That would also be fucking fun. Yeah. But okay, co-op and that full world co-op, not Dark Souls co-op. Yeah. And an invasion system. Yeah. Like it. Uh, b- put a fucking bounty system in the game, actually. Put a, make the rep system not the streets know you. Put it with gangs. Put it with fixers. Yeah, let's more get, of a relationship thing. Yeah, let's get new fixers. Yeah, the like, like have it like I can call it like the put activities on the map that isn't just killing people. Like make fun like cyberpunky versions of like the mini games in GTA. Let me yeah. do cyberpunk bowling. Yeah, let me do like cyberpunk darts. But like I have it just be with a fucking gun. Yeah, have okay. If you're gonna like, you have, can do that fucking part in Mass Effect Three with Shepard and Garrus. There are four romanceable characters in the game. Why can't I call them and ch- tell and have like dates with them in locations? Also, there's four romanceable characters. I understand that gender identity is important. Yeah, but let me some fuck of this all is of them. Fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, like while I respect Judy and her desire to be a lesbian, sometimes I want to fuck Pan Am too. <laughs> Panem's great. Yeah. I also, dudes, not that good into them. I think they're very weak characters. Both of them aren't that good. I think Carrie is... River is the better one, and that sucks because he's a cop. Yeah. <laughs> he's a cop that doesn't realize that the system's wrong. He just thinks the system's not for And him. fucks you with his nephew in the next room. Yeah. And then Carrie's just like a washed up fucking loser mm-hmm. who like is definitely just fucking you to fuck Johnny. Yeah. Like, because he's, like, in love with Johnny. It's just so... It's it's just weak. It's just not good. It's not good... It's not good relationship. The, like, Judy, Pan Am, River. Great. Carrie, you suck. <laughs> I'm also, sorry that you're the only gay option. Also, Like, um, gay MLM. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Multi-level marketing. Sorry. Also... <laughs> um, have an addiction system. Yeah, oh, man. Like, isn't that the fucking thing? Oh, I feel like that's a Fallout spoiler three for Edge Runners. Okay, I don't know if it's a spoiler or not because I haven't seen the show and I've just seen like. Well, I think Edge Runners has like the humanity thing where like you can get cyberpsychosis by having too I many. Think, I think David gets cyberpsychosis. I think I, think, I think a character has it. Yeah, like, like either David or Rebecca. Like they're one both. Of the, somebody, somebody in the show does. I don't yeah. know. Maybe not I have no idea. Um, but like you know. Like yeah, have like a have a cyber fucking system where it's like you get buffs for actually like much like, like much like if they if they do do that fucking Justice League Dark movie, I want uh I want uh John Constantine to be introduced as a heroin addict as he is in the comics, where he literally they go to his house and it's fucking a huge mess and he's got the fucking <laughs> he's clearly just passed out yeah, after what doing if, heroin. What if fucking like the Because that's punk as fuck. What if there was a fucking system in the game where it's like cyber psychosis is something that can defeat you in the game and it comes from overusing your cybernetics? Well, I, like, or, like I think they went away from that because like I know a lot of people like take issue with the idea of like 
having too many <laughs> having too many fucking uh fake limbs somehow makes you evil um or go crazy or whatever but like if you just instead have well but like, you can put it with like the stuff that like with like abilities or something like yeah. the sandivistan one or whatever mm-hmm. have that one be like have have other things that's not just the one that slows down time and lets you run fast through time have other things where it's like you can just do a fucking mind blast yeah or you could fucking do like other. or if shit. you overuse them things happen in game to you yeah and then have it like you have to do something to like lower the bar kind of like radiation and fallout yeah and then and then have it be like you have to take drugs and then you can have addictions to those drugs yeah or it's like you can take drugs to make your fucking cybernetics more powerful yeah like only do it the ones that like affect your organs in your head. You don't have to having mantis blade shouldn't make me go crazy. Having double jumps in my legs shouldn't make me go crazy. But having a chip in my brain that makes my brain run faster should make me go a little insane. Yeah. Or having a fucking like thing that pumps my liver differently to like yeah. that should affect my whole body. Cyberpsychosis should just be like a whole collection of diseases that you can build yeah. up. Also, street cred system, maybe you could have, like, one, like, gangs that are more into, like, cybernetics, some gangs that aren't, like, kind of yeah. like the Saints Row, like, if you wear purple, you would get, a, like, a bonus to yeah. your RP. It's like, if you show up with Mantis Blades, this gang is like, fuck yeah! But if you show up with, like, fucking Gorilla Arms, they're like, no, no, no. Even though Gorilla Arms are stronger in base game. Yeah. Is what I found out. Because blade just, weapons are good, but if you just buff your strength stat really, really high, you can just mm-hmm. punch a motherfucker straight to the moon. Also, let's just fucking fully remove like, any missions for me that helping police, or at least give you an option that it's like either yeah. you help the police for extra cash or you help the people for like uh, rep. It's like you gain big rep and mm-hmm. a little bit of cash, or gain big cash and a little bit of rep. Yeah, and also. Here's something that I think would be cool. Allow Rocker Boy to be a class, maybe. I don't even think like a class Let system. Let Rocker th- Boy be a class. <laughs> I think what I would be fun for me is to... Or a mechanic or whatever. They already have this in the game. Um, which is the... Uh, like, you get additional perk points from using the weapon a lot. Yeah. Let's just fucking full Skyrim and steal that system and just be like... You get your handgun skill up by actually using handguns. You get your shotgun skill by actually using shotguns. Like Final Fantasy 2? Sure. But, like, I can only think of Skyrim as, like, my example. <laughs> well, Final Fantasy 2 did it first. And bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Skyrim would do the thing where, like, every point you would get into it, you would get a point to put into things. Yeah. But then you could obviously go outside you only, of the points. In Final Fantasy 2, so the reason why that game's system is fucked up is the only way you can uh, level up your health stat is by getting hit. So that's why in order to do that game well, you have to cast a spell on enemies to make them not hit you. And then you hit your friendlies in the random battles. <laughs> and that's how you grind up your health. Stat. That's funny. Yep. Um, yeah, I just think playing the game to earn stuff is good, is more valuable to me. The reason why than... I think Rocker Boy should be like more of a game mechanic is because in the tabletop game, um, Rocker Boys are like essentially... The idea of a rocker boy in cyberpunk is like being a busker profession, but like in between being a busker and being a rock star, you're like, you're a rock star who just runs around and you can fucking play guitar and convince people to do things for you. That would be actually really fun if it was like, there was missions where like like let's fade out. away the story with uh with Johnny in the because that's based on like a real um playable thing that you can do in the game yeah um where you can play as Johnny uh he's so let's fade away he really like he plays a concert and starts a riot in the concert yeah that's what that is so yeah like make it like Rocker Boys or something where it's like you can in the middle of a fight like maybe like fucking pull out or maybe you can pull play. out your guitar your arm, no your arm turns into a fucking guitar neck or whatever and you just fucking yeah. like 
you could and it like connects to whatever and you can just like strum your shit yeah and then like if there's people around you maybe they'll hop in and assist you yeah or it's like you can buff yourself like that and then uh, like reasons to do it other than hoping someone assists you it's yeah. just like a passive ability where it's like whenever you buff yourself if there's someone around and they're like are and you're in a place with a high enough reputation they'll join in and help you fight or something yeah and like you know, it's just or like you can sick NPCs on things, or you can distract enemies, or you can solve problems non lethally, yeah. or you know. Also, if you're gonna have a fast travel system, just let me fucking do it from anywhere. Yeah, don't make me have to find it. Make have the kiosks be standard fast travel points, but let me have to just fucking open up the menu fast travel. So I don't have to go to do the kiosk. Some games do the you have to interact with this thing before you can fast travel to it in a way that's fine and Cyberpunk doesn't. Yeah. Well, Cyberpunk doesn't because it's like you just walk past it. You just yeah. have to go in the vicinity of it. Yeah. Like Dark Souls is good because it's like you had once you hit a bonfire, you can teleport to that bonfire. Right, but also like Dark Souls isn't an open world game in the same way that Cyberpunk is. Yeah. Um Breath of the Wild. Spider-Man. I just never fast travel because I like swinging around. Well, there you go. Then just do that. Yeah. Cyberpunk. Well, Cyberpunk was just more annoying because it's like... You, you had to drive. You, the buildings get in the way. Yeah. For Spider-Man, it's like, let's go over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, Breath of the Wild, you make those fucking fast travel points and then it's like, cool, got a fast travel point. Pick it with fucking Cyberpunk. It's like uh, missions that unlock your fast travel points. I like think clear Cyberpunk out like a it, gang or whatever. Here's the thing. Cyberpunk, I just think it's abstracted because fast travel is using the subway system and two of the three life paths you grew up in the city. You should know how to fucking use the subway. Yeah. That's yeah, it's a, same with Corpo. You also grew up in the city. That's what I mean. Corpo the only one and where street you kid. The yeah. only one where you shouldn't have any fast travel points is Nomad. Yeah, then you have to find the fast travel points. Yeah. Because you don't know where the fucking subway stations are. <laughs> It's just like in the fucking beginning of the game as well when it's like, oh, they're closing down the bridge and it's like, dude, I'm sure a subway still goes underneath. Yeah. You just have to leave the car somewhere. And to be fair, you leave the car everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They auto-drive. You just be like, drive around. I'm going to go fucking hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. Also, in the next Cyberpunk, actually have that... Uh actually follow up further on that easter egg of cyberpunk being one of the alternate universes that uh from witcher 3 <laughs> yeah sure because i know there is Have like siri show up well because siri in witcher 3 so like she went to a place because like, you know she warps lights. between things right yeah so she she writes in in her journal writes one that is the like sounds a lot like the original trailer for cyberpunk 2077 mm-hmm like literally the events happening she's just like clearly there hanging out um and so i think cyberpunk has some references to the witcher but i think i think go further on it have that be like a side mission That'd yeah be funny. oh also remove the schluter aspect i don't want to pick up a thousand guns i think um bring the uh, polymer one-shot concept from the tabletop to the game itself. I don't know what that is. Polymer one-shots are, get this, Cyberpunk invented this first. These are guns made entirely of plastic, mostly on the black market, that are extremely cheap and break extremely easily. It's a 3D printed gun before they invented 3D printing. Build a whole concept of like you can like you do a fight but all you can do is pit, like it's one in the chamber. Yeah. The Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I, that'd be sick. Like yeah, that would that could be fun. Yeah. Just or make it like just make guns like more, more difficult to get and not super st- everywhere. Numbery. Yeah. And just, or just fucking make it like have it be like you uh, get your pistol, you upgrade your pistol. Yeah. You get your shotgun, you upgrade your shotgun. And maybe you get parts that can and make these, it into and an that iconic these things weapon, but. are expensive. And you kind of, if you think about it, you're like, well, you know, getting a getting fucking cyber shit uh, is more expensive, but it doesn't have ammo and durability. 
right? yeah. or whatever. Maybe not durability, only for the Fuck durability. polymer. Polymer one shots need durability because it's the point of them, right? It's like a 3D printed gun that you can shoot twice and then it fucking explodes. Just have it be like random where it's like they always have the ammo, the like the on, the amount of ammo they have until they break. Yeah. Like you pick it up and it's like this one has four, this one had five, this one has yeah. six, this one had two. And you just go... And you get a cool animation of the plastic just fucking chattering in your hand. You can even fucking add like if you had if you shoot the final bullet, yeah, then it damages you. Oh, that'd be cool. Because it shatters in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Only if you're a- adsing. Yeah. It only damages <laughs> you if you ads. Well, no, it's still, it, it does more damage. It does headshot damage if you're adsing. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thanks so much for listening and or watching. All the shit's in the fucking description. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Bye.